A baseball is hit with an initial speed of 50 meters per second at an angle of 30 degrees above the horizontal. A. Determine the maximum height reached by the projectile. So the first thing we're going to do is to write down our given information. So we know we hit a ball with an initial velocity of 50 meters per second at an angle of 30 degrees above the horizontal. We also know that the acceleration in the vertical direction is equal to the acceleration due to gravity, which is negative 9.8 meters per second squared. We know the acceleration in the horizontal direction is equal to 0 meters per second squared, because there is nothing acting upon it to actually accelerate the object. We are going to denote our starting position for y naught to be equal to 0 meters and our x naught to also be equal to 0 meters. When we reach the highest point of our motion, so this, whatever height h, we are going to reach. When we are at this point, we know we have a horizontal component which is constant from the very beginning, but our vertical component at the apex, our highest point, is zero. So Vy of the apex is equal to zero meters per second. We now are going to use the equation Vy of the apex squared is equal to V naught Y squared plus 2ay delta y in order to calculate the height of the projectile. So we're trying to find what delta y is. So we got to subtract v naught y squared from both sides. To a y delta y is equal to v y apex squared minus v naught y squared. And we're now going to divide both sides by 2ay. That will give us delta y is equal to vy of the apex squared minus v naught y squared over 2ay. And we know that delta y is equal to y minus y naught. And we know from that y minus y naught is equal to vy of the apex squared minus v naught y squared over 2ay. Now to solve for y, we add y naught to both sides, giving us y is equal to vy of the apex squared minus v naught y squared over 2ay plus y naught. If we now plug in all the values that we are given, we would find that y is equal to vy of apex squared, that will be 0 meters per second there, minus v naught y will be 50 meters per second times sine of 30 degrees squared over 2 times negative 9.8 meters per second squared plus y naught, which is 0 meters. Now calculate this out, we would find our height of the projectile to be equal to 32 meters. Part B says determine the total time in the air. Now there's two ways to determine the total time in the air. For our projectile, we can consider that our initial starting height is 0 meters and that our final height, once we reach the ground again, is also equal to 0 meters, and from there we can use y equals y naught plus v naught y t plus one half a y t squared in order to solve for the time it takes for the object to land again. Or, off your knowledge of projectile motion, we know that if we're launched with a velocity of 50 meters per second, we know that when we're coming back down, we'll have a velocity equal to the opposite of that in the direction. So we could also use our knowledge that Vy is equal to V naught Y plus Ayt, knowing that Vy is equal to negative V naught Y. 
because we know the magnitude of our velocity is going to be the same. So we know the horizontal is the same. So therefore, our vertical magnitude also has to be the same. But we do know that when we're pointing in this direction, that our vy final is a negative v naught y. So knowing this, we can use this equation and solve for t here. This is much easier and a little more elegant to solve it in this manner here. So we're going to use the second method shown here in order to solve for the total time in the air. So we're going to solve for t here. So we're going to subtract v naught y from both sides, giving us vy minus v naught y is equal to a y times t. We're now going to divide both sides by a y, which gives us t is equal to b y minus v naught y over a y. But we remember that v y is equal to negative v naught y, so our equation here is actually negative 2 v naught y over a y because it's negative v naught y minus v naught y will give us a negative 2 v naught y over a y. If we now plug in the values here, we have negative 2 times 50 meters per second times the sine of 30 degrees over negative 9.8 meters per second squared, which will give us a time of 5.1 seconds. Part C says determine the maximum horizontal distance covered by the projectile. So we now are going to use the equation x equals x naught plus v naught x t plus one half a x t squared. We remember that x naught is equal to zero meters, so we can cancel out that term. And we also know that a x is equal to zero meters, so we can cancel out this term. We are now left with our horizontal range is equal to v naught x times t. We now plug in our values for that. v naught x is 50 meters per second times cos of 30 degrees times our time of 5.1 seconds. Our horizontal range would be equal to 221 meters. Part D says determine the velocity of the projectile five seconds after landing. So in order to calculate this, we need to know about five seconds after we fired it off. So we need to calculate our Vy and our Vx for our object. So when it's Vy, Vy is equal to V naught Y plus Ayt. So we know Vy is equal to 50 meters per second times the sine of 30 degrees plus negative 9.8 meters per second squared times the time of 5 seconds. This would give us a final velocity of negative 24 meters per second. For Vx, we know that there is no horizontal acceleration of it. So this term is zero. So we know that Vx is equal to V naught x. So Vx is equal to 50 meters per second times the cos of 30 degrees, which gives us Vx is equal to 43 meters per second. Knowing this, we can now draw when we're just above the ground, balls here, this is our horizontal velocity, Vx, and we have our vertical velocity, Vy. We know that the resultant here, which we will denote to be V, is down and in this direction. Now, in order to solve for V, we have to apply the Pythagorean theorem for this triangle here. So if we do so, we have v squared is equal to vx squared plus vy squared. If we want to solve for just v, t 
take the square root of both sides, giving us v is equal to the square root of vx squared plus vy squared. Now if we plug in the values for vx and vy, we get v is equal to the square root of 43 meters per second squared plus negative 24 meters per second squared, which if we square those out, v is equal to square root of 1,849 meters squared per second squared plus 576 meters squared per second squared. If we now add that together, we get v is equal to square root of 2,425 meters squared per second squared. And if we take the square root of that, we get 49 meters per second for the velocity of the object five seconds after it was fired.